Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Persona 5 Royal. In the last episode, we secured our route to Maruki's treasure hidden in a place that is extremely distorted to the point he believes that it's akin to the rapture of mankind, and all who were helped by him either willingly or forcefully become enlightened by his gift to the world, all because of the persona he's awoken, bestowing the most dangerous power imaginable, the power to shape worlds through cognition alone. With the final fight of our story, now pretty much almost upon us. We're actually in for a secret fight, which I ended up figuring out because of the fact that um, you can actually fight off with Lavenza. So in order to unlock Lavenza, you have to secure your route to Maruki's palace. And with that all done and over with, we're pretty much ready to actually fight off with our true Velvet Room Warden, Lavenza. So with that being said, we're pretty much ready, because um, although I do have a feel safe just in case, so no matter what, you guys will see the ending to the fights, we will actually attempt to do the fight in today's episode. So if we do end up losing, we will go through and use the fail safe. But if we don't, we will be doing it in today's episode, and hopefully we'll actually win, and we won't have to use the fail safe. But with that being said, Honestly, we do have one other thing we're going to do in today's episode, just so we have another, um, one extra little thing we can add to it, since we do actually have a little bit of a, um, one of those little funner ones to do for request-wise, just because it ended up unlocking the same day. So, let's do this. This AI mask guy. Okay. Hey, have you heard of this AI mask guy? Well, AI mask OZ. I guess some extra ex extreme video streamer with a robot mask and a big audience. We got a request on the fan site from someone who knows him in real life. Oh, well, one of the streamer's friends. Apparently they want him to stop streaming himself going around doing borderline illegal stuff. When anyone tries to talk him out of it, flips out and gets violence. They say he's out of control. Hmm, do we have a name? Yeah, about that. Says he's not gonna post the guy's info online. Guess this AI mask OZ guy has pissed off a lot of people. If you got docs, things could get really ugly. Um, so, we only have his title then, or screen name, um, or whatever. How can we get um, more hints? Um, I'm looking at his archives now. A lot of these streams seem to be from Kichiyoji. If we check around Kichiyoji, maybe talk to some students, we might learn something. <laughs> students, huh? So our best shot is probably weekday, um, afternoons. Oh, um, but Kichiyoji isn't the only place he visits. It couldn't hurt to check other locations, too. Um, okay then. Let's look around. Um, we'll leave Kichiyoji to you, Spooks. Okay. With that being said, let's go ahead over into, um, Kichiyoji. Pretty much, um, where this actual, um, location is actually locked in. And thankfully it is a weekday, so we can actually do this. So, let's do this. Um, you remember that AI mask guy? Um, let's see if we can dig up anything on his real name. Okay, well, let's look around. So, let's see if we can find anything. Which, I did technically already do this, so I know the locations to go to, so... We'll just go straight to those, just to save you guys some time. Have you heard of a streamer called AI Mask OZ? Um, hey, they're talking about AI Mask OZ. Let's listen in a bit. Um, oh yeah. He body slammed into the line at the croquet shop and had a tantrum, saying you're blocking traffic. Gotta be honest, I recoiled when I saw that. Um, yeah, that one. Ama Saki, my classmate, he's apparently that guy's little brother. Um, whoa, seriously? I feel sorry for him. Won't he be roped into trouble for being family with a guy like that? And he's got a lot of haters too, like that group hanging around in the alley. Um, I can't see I'm surprised. Um, so AI Mask OZ has a little brother, whose last name is Amaski, and he's got haters. Um, that's really concerning. Um, they're apparently hanging out in Harmony Alley. Let's go take a look. Okay, so if you're wondering which one's Harmony Alley, it's actually the first one. So if you go down here, we should be able to find them right away. And there they are. Okay, so let's see what's listening on in on these guys. Um, did you get any info on AI Mask OZ? Um, well, maybe these guys are AI Mask um, haters? Um, let's just listen in on them. Um, yeah, I got something good. His name is and phone number, 
and it was easy too, you think for an AI, he'd have better cybersecurity. And I noticed something else, AI Mask Ozai is just an anagram for his real name. Huh, I bet he thought he was being clever. Won't he be long now, um, won't be long now until we figure out where he lives. Then we'll gather everyone who hates him, and he finally will get what he deserves. He pulled the same kind of shit himself. He should know what's coming. Hmm, apparently he did the same thing as... Huh, that's weird. So apparently he's did the same kind of like a riot thing to somebody else. That's interesting. I didn't actually get to look at any of the dialogue since I skipped through it. I just wanted to make sure I knew the location since the events is more of the thing we're focusing on in today's episode, but I thought we could do this as like a side thing. Um, those guys are bad news. I never, um, I'd never be able to relax if they were after me. And AI Mask Ozai is an anagram of his real name. That's some interesting info. Hmm, okay, so we just need to mix it up and find out what the name is. <laughs> How to go, people. The guy does illegal stuff like vandalize illegally parked cars or drown kick smokers in non-smoking areas. I kind of see why they say this AI mask guy is out of control. Well, plenty of people aren't happy with his antics, but he does seem to be having a quite a following. It seems he has a strange sort of charisma, despite everything. Um, I asked around too, but I didn't learn much. Sorry. Um, did you figure anything out, Spooks? His last name is Amoski, or his screen name is an anagram. Well, let's just say the name. His last name is Amoski. Um, nice. Anything else? His full name is his handle. His handle's based on his name. Well, his handle's based on his name, because it's an anagram. Um, I see. So if he had scrambled the anagram, we'll have his full name. Um, so if the he's AI Amosk uh, Ozai, and his name is, um, Amoski. That means, um, we just need to find the Ozai, maybe read it backwards, or I give up. Then just leaves Ozai. Yep. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well done, Spooks. <laughs> wait. Oh, yeah, so the AI mask part is just Amoski. Oh, he separated his first and last names into discrete parts. Yep. Um, AI mask comes out neatly to Amoski. That also explains the extra A in the world. word. Um, and Ozai in on its own can be read backwards to find the name Izuo. Hmm, Izuo. Okay, so Mosky Izuo. Or Izuo Mosky, since Amoski is the last name. Um, which means our target's name is most likely Izuo Amoski. Um, just check the nav. We got a hit. <laughs> that's your advisor. Bringing awesome. Well, technically it's more... <laughs> Poor Mishima is the real advisor, but or producer more like, but <laughs> I guess so. Um, it settles it. Now we know his full name. Um, and um, that's left is all that's left is to meet in the hideouts and talk it over with everyone. True there. Now that you have your target, now you just need to make sure everyone's on board for the mission, which technically they already are. So honestly, I don't get why it ever says that because. You obviously can do it if you get it as a request. There's no if ands, or buts about that, but that being said, all we need to do now is just head out to the cafe, since we can honestly just resummon everybody here, so honestly, that's all we need to do. So let's review our request and prepare for um, our side quest for today, and then after that, we'll do Lebenza. Um, well then, we um, have some new intel on Memento's target today. Um, this intel is on the video streamer known as AI Mask Ozai, who does some borderline illegal stuff. Um, while he was has a lot of fans, he also seems to be have plenty of critics and haters who are trying to find out his home address. Um, that's a thing that the requester was most scared of. Um, we can't just leave this be. I agree that we should change his heart. Um, yeah, I, it's already bad enough that someone like him is lurking in our city. Um, I figured you all agree, so I already sent out the calling card. We are good to go. Okay, cool. Thanks, Futama. <laughs> nice, Futama. Alright, let's take down this annoying big brown. Okay, fake man show. Which seems to be our final request of the game, so honestly, I thought that was another reason why we should do it. So, with that being said, I think we're all ready. Mm, target check. One of them left. Um, in the area. Shall we go? Um, yeah, let's go. I think we're all ready. No reason to sit back and wait. So, with that being said, let's head into, um, good old Mementos for 
today's episode, since this is where we're going to be spending pretty much the entire entire episode, or actually the entire episode, to be honest. So, let's do this. I've been waiting for you. I came here to ask you a favor of you. Actually, would you mind indulging me? A favor? What do you want? Um, yeah, what kind of favor? What do you want to do? Um, I would like to engage you in combat. Um, now that I've regained my original form, I wish to duel you once more. I've witnessed just how much you've grown since defeating the Malevolent God and completing your rehabilitation. And one who rules over power, I wish to ju judge such growth firsthand. One who rules over power? Or is it necessary? Um, yeah, what do you mean by one who rules over power? Um, that is correct. As such an inv individual, it is my responsibility to gauge your power. It is a vital step up to my self-discovery. Um, my master has granted permission for us to engage in battle but I will not force you to accept the challenge. Oh, now, please come speak to me once you are prepared. Okay, and once we're ready, we'll definitely take you on, because we do not want to play around with Lavenza. So once we start that fight, it's going to be all out, um, pretty much an all-out assault, because we cannot, and I mean cannot, give her a single chance. And I actually found out something. Um, we actually missed out on something with Jose, even though we did do the fight with him. There is actually more we can do with him, um, surprisingly. And it's ex it's just a little bit of extra small dialogue, but there you can actually do something here. But let's go see how he's doing, since um, I do actually want to show this, just because I just remembered it. Oh, good job, mister. <laughs> you look like there's something you want to um, ask. Of course. Oh, I do it. My studies are really paying off. I could tell after doing that thing, humans do reading the room. Um, I'm actually supposed to keep this stuff secret, but since you've been handing me so much, uh, helping me so much, I guess I'll make an exception. Um, but go easy on me, right? I'm still kind of bad at explaining things. There are lots of human words I still don't know yet. Um, so what do you want to ask about? Um, what are you? Yeah, what are you? Um, hmm, how do I put this? I guess the only way I know how to phrase it is... I'm so interested in learning about humans because I am, I'm not one. I really want to learn about parts. Makes sense. I honestly think- I still think he's some kind of, um, like, entity like the Velvet Room Attendants just because of the hair and the eyes alone, but I'm not entirely sure though, because honestly the game hasn't even said it, but he's definitely a deity, we do know that, because the Velvet Room, um, Velvet Room Attendants are, um, deities of some sort. They're demigods in a way, but I don't know if they're full-on gods, but they're definitely, like Lavenza was saying, um, gaugers of power to, basically, they check the person that they're tasked to to make sure that they're fully ready to take on the task that they're really at hand and make sure they're fully prepared for the ruin that um, they have to go through in order to, you know, save the world. Because every single game you fight through a major conflict and you have to prevail through it. So, obviously, they're there to gauge and make sure that you are fully prepared for the final fights. So, honestly, I'm still not really sure about Jose, but I definitely do have quite a good grasp on what the Velvet Room Attendants are. I think there might be... I think they might wrap up the story about the Velvet Room Attendants in maybe the next Persona game, I think. Just to be completely honest, I have a good feeling about it, but because there's no... Well, surefire that when Persona 6 will come out, I do have a feeling that they might, you know, finish up the story of the Velvet Room Attendants. Well, you know, they're obviously going to keep the Velvet Room Attendants being a character, even if they do wrap up the story. I do feel like may we might be getting the, you know, the rest of the story maybe in the next one. I would hope so. But, um, honestly, pretty much that's kind of how I understand what the Velvet Room Attendants are, just basically demigods that... Well, like the Lavenza and, and, well, Elizabeth and Margaret, they're all testers of power and they make sure that you're fully prepared. But, Jose? Um, good question. Um, was there something else you wanted to ask about? Um, why are you studying humans? Yeah, what are you doing about that? Um, well, I guess it's because he promised that person I'd do it. But I don't actually know any more than that. 
Um, what did you know is the longer I work on my studies, the more I think it'd be nice to use what I've learned to help others. Um, I don't want to just turn away from problems like other humans. I want to be more like you guys. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. Okay, um, who is that person? Yeah, is it, um, the person that I thought it was? I think it's Philemon, but I really don't know if the game's gonna stay straight up say it. Hmm. Who? Oh, you mean the person who told me to study humans? Um, hmm. I really don't know how to explain it with the human, um, with any human words I know. Um, the only ones I could use, um, that would be accurate are harsh but very kind. Hmm. Well, I don't know his personality. All I know is what he looks like. So I don't know if that's, um, him or not. I would be able to tell if I did play through Persona 1 and 2 and I knew his personality, because he does have a story. But I don't know. Hmm. Well, I can't tell based on that. Why can you change cognition? Yeah, why do you have that power? Um, oh, you mean the thing I do with my mentor's pressure points? Um, now that's hard to explain, but I, I wasn't always able to do that. I do have the power to speak to everyone's hearts, but just a tiny bit. And not enough to affect the real world, either. I can pretty much only make people feel touched in some way. I can alter the cognition here, but that's also the extent of my power. Hmm, okay. Um, or is there something else you want to ask about? No, that's it. Thanks, buddy. Um, really? Okay, then. Well, come back if you ever have anything you want to ask. Um, good job, mister. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. But there's the final bit of story for Jose. But because I didn't actually know there was more to him after that. But if you guys are wondering about the location of this area, it's actually on Area 15. <laughs> Which is actually the reason why I went there. And, ooh, Futaba gave us a freebie on actually finding it. Thank you, Futaba. But let's see here. So now we just need to make our way to it. So where is it hiding? Oh, it's really close. Okay, that's really easy. Okay, so we just need to go around once. And it looks like we might not even run into a shadow. Never mind. Actually, yeah, never mind. We actually got through. Mm -hmm. I can sense a target up ahead. Um, do you want to head in? Yes, I do. Let's go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Time to wrap up our side quest for today. And then we'll start doing the actual, 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 actual hardest part of today's episode. Oh, uh, that's Yamu Amasaki. Let's stuff in for his brother's sake. Okay, let's do it. For his brother's sake, indeed. So let's see what's going on with him. <laughs> dance, dance. Seeing these idiots get so upset by my videos is incredible. Okay. <laughs> so you're a Mamasaki. You seriously don't give a damn about how much you trouble. You're causing your family. Hmm. Trouble for my family? <laughs> you wouldn't understand. Haters are my motivation. My parents and my brothers are idiots too. They're just cowards who don't understand my fame. I'm gonna get even more famous. Okay. He really doesn't care. Okay. Perfect target for us to handle with. And he's a macabre, which is kind of funny. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> okay, this shouldn't be a hard fight. Macabre is not a hard persona to fight, so this should be easy, but you never know, it could be hard. It is an S rank request, so it could actually be kind of hard. Now allow me to show you my popularity. Okay, summoning things. Oh, that's easy. Fuse Ghost. Mm, looks like he's calling for backup. Um, is he calling for reinforcements? Be careful, Joker. Okay, be careful indeed. Okay, um, honestly, hmm, I'm gonna say debilitate, yeah. Debilitate the macabre, and then we'll do the rest with our team. And honestly, because I think we can actually crit these kind of um, enemies, we'll just go for crits if we can. So honestly, I think that's probably what we're gonna end up doing here. So just in case, because honestly, it seems like he's not actually good against any physical skills. So honestly, this is just free slaughtering at this point. Okay, now that he's dropped quite a considerable amount, and we also get a free baton pass because of the um, the free crits. Let's go for a big Maggie Dole on the massive damage that we can do with Almighty. Okay, he's almost down, but that means we're pretty much done with the fight, so thankfully this s rank fight's actually much easier than some of the other ones, because there was one with the Yochitsune, which was much harder to be honest. But if we can get rid of um, the Macabre, this fight's pretty much over, because I don't think he can free summon anything else after this. And then we'll just blast away a little bit to make sure that it's just one left. Okay. <laughs> and here you go, buddy. I'm just going to smack you to little itty bitty pieces. And then I think one blast from the Megido Blaster here should be your downfall, which it was. 
Okay, easy. <laughs> Not bad at all. 9,500 experience and almost... Well, I was going to say almost 110,000, but it's kind of close. Still $100,000, which is pretty good. Although I don't really need the money anymore because it's all just going to personas and fusing um, the max weapons for everybody. Um, seeing my view count get higher and higher, it just felt so good. I got mad, so mad at my family for taking that enjoyment away from me. They took it away from you. You realized your mistake or go apologize to your brother? Yeah, apologize to your brother. Huh, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I punched him real hard and said horrible things to my parents. I'm gonna apologize to everyone. Yeah, you should do that, bud. So, let's grab that and a centric belt. Okay then, fake man show. Take it. But there we go, our side quest is done for today. So, now comes the big parts. But first thing, um, we're actually gonna check one thing real quick. So, I actually do wonder what this eccentric belt does, because I actually didn't get to check it. So, let's see here. Centric belt, where are you hiding? Shouldn't be too hard to find. <laughs> it just literally say new when we go past it, so... Let's see here, still don't see it. There it is. Centric belts, ailment boost, brilliantly colored belts. You may get on looks from others when wearing it. Hmm, okay. But it gives you basically increased chance to um, do ailments to people, which is decent. Late game, it's kind of weird to get it, but does come in handy um, for a new game plus, though. Definitely can say that. But with that being said, now it's time for the hardest part of today's episode. So, we're gonna do this. Okay, and I already have the um, file all sent. Obviously, I made sure that we have everything sent before the fights. And we do have the fail safe that I did talk about before. But hopefully, I don't have to do the fail safe. But I do have the fail safe um, ready in case we do lose this fight. But um, this time around, instead of me doing it on safety, which is the reason why it's called fail safe, um, we're actually going to be doing it on, um, well, a normal difficulty, not normal normal, which is our hard mode or normal difficulty that we normally do. But it's the same difficulty we did the wardens on easy. But it's not. It's definitely going to be nothing but easy. But um, with careful planning, like I did, it should be at least much more doable than um, super duper hard. So that being said, let's see this. Since um, this is definitely not going to be an easy fight. Oh, please allow me to experience for myself the results of your true rehabilitation. Are you prepared now? I'm good to go. Yep, I think I'm ready. So, see what we got on our hands. Cause, definitely not gonna be an easy fight. Um, before we begin, there's something I wish to discuss with you. Hmm? What's that? What do you want to talk about? Um, as we stand before each other like this, I realize that I'm feeling a bit unusual. I suppose one could call it nervous. Is it possible you feel the same? Yeah, that's right. I feel the same as always. I definitely feel this um, nervous, so yeah, that's entirely right. Because um, the Wardens was hard, and um, this is much harder um, because of a gimmick. The gimmick in this is much harder than the Wardens one. The Wardens one is you just make sure they go, both go down at the same time, and you make sure to knock them out as fast as possible. Um, Lavenza, you need to do certain things during certain phases, or you you get one shot and it's over. So yeah. Um, definitely not going to be an easy fight. So, thankfully I have it written down and I remember based on my um, fights with it. So I understand how to do the fight and how to do the gimmicks. And I'll explain everything once we get to it. But, um, yeah, this is definitely not going to be an easy thing. Oh, so even someone such as yourself gets nervous at times? Um, uh, more nervous about fighting you, honestly. Um, as one who rules over power, I am truly delighted with your indul with your indulging of me in combat. Please share me with me everything you've experienced on the path you have taken up to this point. Um, of course, this path could not have been forged without the assistance of your comrades. Thus, they are permitted to assist you in this challenge as well. That will permit me to fully display my own strength. Um, and now, here I come. Okay, here we go. The hardest fight in Persona 5. 
So, um, or Persona 5 Royal, because she is a new game plus for Royal, apparently. Oh, so this is Lebenda. Don't be tricked by how she looks, your power is enormous. And that's true. Oh, you only cheated to give everything you got. Oh, there is no need to hold back to me. Please come at me with every last bit of your strength. And now, let's begin. Okay. Here we go. So, this is definitely not going to be an easy fight. So, how this fight works is there's four phases. Um, each one starts at a 25% HP interval. So, HP from 100 to 75 is the first phase. 75 to 50 is the second phase. 50 to 25 is third phase. And final phase is 25 to 0. First phase is the easiest. Um, or actually... Nah, final phase is easier, I think, because of the fact that it's much um, easier to do damage to her. But, um, well, depends on your difficulty, I should say. Final phase is hard depending on difficulty, but um, yeah, this is definitely not going to be easy. So, first things first, we need to do a Neo Convendenza here, okay, to get a free, um, just a free heat riser on everybody. So, this will help us out drastically. Okay, so now everyone has a heat riser, and now we'll go for, let's see here, I think what we want to do is go for, well, we can go for crits, or we can go for, oh wait, no, I have to do something more important. I, I had my first turns um, set, and I forgot the first thing to do, but I, I made sure to double um, do this a couple times to remember, so thankfully it just came back in my mind. But what we need to do is we actually need to use an item here, a Baptismal Water, to drop her um, staff buffs. So we can do a double debilitate on her this turn because of the checkmate on the Kodom. Okay. <laughs> if you're wondering about my team, this is be was because I saw somebody had this build and it ended up looking really, really good. Okay, so far so good. No free crits, but it's we're definitely in a good situation. Okay, she's going to be changing her persona a bit, but... Thankfully, it's better than nothing, honestly. But we definitely need to be careful, though, just in case. Okay. So far, so good, though. Um, definitely want to make sure we go for as much as we can possibly do here. So first things first is we're actually going to go into... Honestly, I think we can go for debilitate here because I want to keep that um, free concentrate we get for um, the Tyrant's Will um, item just to make sure we're fully ready here, because what we need to do here is we need to knock her down on the floor, and that's the first thing we need to do. So if we can knock her down with any of our sword stances, we should have this, <laughs> and the game won't give it to us. It's not the easiest thing to do, but we need to get a um, actual baton pass to work, because the baton pass is where all our damage is going to come in, but the game is definitely not letting me get that, that's for sure. But Definitely, hopefully we'll be able to get that. I might end up just using Brave Step to get it. I'm trying to do this in the safest way possible. That's the reason why we're going slow but steady. Because I don't want to mess up here because if we mess up, it's over. So I'm just trying to be as, as careful as possible without messing up. Because we need to do, um, we need to actually do damage to the point of actually forcing, um, <laughs> Forcing her to actually go into phase, um, the next phase, because although I said there was phases and there is certain things to it, you do need to do certain amount of, um, health thresholds through each phase, which is something that's not going to be easy if, um, we're not careful, so definitely kind of need to be careful just in case. Thankfully, Veil and Midnight saved us from being knocked down there, but so far the game's not giving us a freebie here. Because if we want to do this right, we need to actually knock her down. Which I'm surprised that we haven't got one yet. But apparently with high crit chance, apparently we're not doing it. Because I know you can crit her. So it's kind of weird that we're not doing it. Because that's definite. There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, there we go. Now we can actually do something. Okay, so this is the reason why we need to crit. Because we want a baton pass into um, Joker here. And then we want to do as much damage as we possibly can with the baton pass. So just drop as much damage as you possibly could do. Because 1,600 is definitely nice. Okay, so far so good. Okay, now we're doing some damage here. We just need to get out of phase one. 
and phase one requires well, 5,000, so 20,000 HP, I think, is how much she actually has of 20 for a 5% per. And hopefully this is ultimate supports. Nope, it's just HP. <laughs> oof. Oof, oof, oof. That's not good. But because we're dizzy, we ended up giving a freebie. Oops. Well, eh, it's not the worst case scenario. Okay, let's go for a swords dance here and just keep doing damage, keep being careful, and hopefully, you know, make sure that we're actually safe here. Okay, free crit. There we go. Now we're actually critting. So it looks like we did need the brave, um, the braveness of that. Okay. Well, that at least answers that question. Okay. So brave step is definitely going to help us here to make sure that we hit those damage checks because we definitely need to be careful just in case. Okay, let's go for... Probably, let's... Hmm, can we go for a Makoga one? I wonder if this does a decent amount of damage. Just wondering. 105 is not bad. Okay, let me go and get with that. Okay, just going for Dekunda again. Just gonna drop any kind of stat increases and um, debilitates that we've tried to do on her. Thankfully, she's not doing anything too dangerous yet. Thankfully, um... We don't need to worry about that just yet, obviously, but it's definitely in due time we will need to worry about that. But let's prepare for a new cadenza, make sure everybody's stats are staying up and healthy, because we're going to need those bonuses no matter what, if we want to win this. Okay, so far so good. Let's go for Swords Dances, and there's a free prince. I like it whenever it does that one, because then I know for sure we critted. Okay, good. Okay, so now we can back out, baton pass to Joker. And then we'll go for another um, Nagi Dolan, just to make sure we're doing as much damage as possible here, and being as safe as possible, because this is going to break through any kind of resistances she has, because during this first phase, she's going to be swapping between um, between different personas, and each one has different resistances, so it changes her resistance. And she has one that's open, and then um, all the rest of them aren't. I don't know which ones are which, so I wouldn't know for sure which one to go after. So I'm being careful here, just in case. But let's use checkmate to drop that, and then we'll do a brave step just in case, just so we keep that crit up, just in case, because we want to keep that up as much as possible. Okay, here we go. Oh, for a second I thought it was phase two. Okay, the way she looked at me, it made it look like it was going to be phase two for a second. Okay, good thing we have detox though. That's definitely helping. Okay, she's going to open up another character for us, although technically the technical damage isn't nice to get hit by, but... At least awakens up who we need to be awakened. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to actually go in and make sure we do a triple concentrate here with good old um, Yotsutsune because I have a little sword on him. And let me make sure it was concentrate. Yeah, we want to do concentrate here. Make sure we have as much damage as possible. Okay, and then let's see here. Well, thankfully, she's actually um freely able to attack, but that's not what I was actually going for. But, eh, I was actually gonna hope that we got through that. Well, let's go for Amarita Soda to make sure everybody's fully healed, just because we don't want um, Kazumi to get knocked out of her sword, sword stance or anything like that, because we can get the free critical there. With the extra damage from everything else, we can actually do quite a good amount of damage here if we're lucky. Okay, so now we go back into good old um, St. Mel here, and we're gonna go for a big old Maggie Dolan and hopefully do a good chunk of HP to drop her into Phase 2, hopefully. And if we can get to Phase 2, okay, thankfully, okay. Phase 2 is easier um, than Phase 1, thankfully, because how the um, mechanic works for Phase 2 is now that we actually did the 5,000 HP threshold to get to Phase 2, now is where things get more interesting, because now the gimmicks start playing. So, gimmick one, um, make sure you knock her out with a, um, with a technical every single turn, or you get one-shotted. So, um, uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, your aptitude for determining your opponent's affinity is quite impressive. I, too, am beginning to warm up. Um, however, this next phase won't be nearly as simple. Okay, here we go. She's going for a free heat riser, and she's also going to be doing some other things, but um, we definitely need to be careful. As long as we play safe here, we win this. Okay, so what we need to do is we're going to go straight into you, we're going to concentrate, get the triple damage, and then prepare for the bigger part of the problem here. Okay, 
So what we want to do is because we have items for this, we're going to be using some special items that actually make sure that she gets hit by technical attacks, because this is the best way of doing this. So if we go down to here, where I have all my little vials that we've collected throughout the entire game, which I was wondering why we were getting all these, this is actually what you need to do. So let me make sure we're doing the right one here. Let's do the high chance of inflicting sleep, sounds good. Okay, just make sure we're doing high amounts of chances for that. And then, after we do one of those, all we need to do now is just hit her with psychic damage. So hit her with a psycho bomb, and that's all we need to do for our first technical. Perfect. Okay, good, good, good. And then we'll baton pass over to Joker, and then prepare for the big hit here. Okay, so now we go back into Sentinel here, and do a big ol' Maggie Dole one again. Just keep doing damage, just try not to worry about her as much as you can. That's all we need to do. All we need to do is just be safe. Okay. So, let's see here. We can go for a brave step here. Or... Actually, I want to do this instead. Because I don't think um, we'll do enough damage to need the need that right away. But what I want to do is I actually want to make sure we're dropping her attack. Because if we can debilitate her, that would be nice. So let's see here. I think I have one of those. Let's see here. The increases for our team. I need one for everybody. I know I have one here. I just need to make sure where it is. Strength of Foodum. Star Onions are for us. Hustle. That's for one of our allies. I know I have one here. I just need to find it. Here it is. Debilitator. There. Perfect. Okay. Use that on her. Debilitator of Foodum. There we go. Now she has a free debilitate on her. And she might or might not try and heal it. Okay, hopefully she doesn't. Oh, she's going for it. Okay, well that's unfortunate, but honestly, at least we did something there. So at least it's free. Okay, we can go here, go for a free concentrate for Joker. His Joker is going to be where all of our damage comes in. And we do actually need to use a Soma soon, so we do need to be careful soon. But let's keep being um, safe and make sure we're doing exactly what we need to do here in order to do our damage. Okay, so now we need to go for a um, sleep vial again. Make sure she's asleep, because that's where all our damage is coming in. Okay, let's go for a checkmate. And now we know that she is knocked down to that. We can go for a freebie here. Okay, so now that she's there, just do another psychic, um, psychic attack. Drop some psychic damage, technical her down so she doesn't get a free one-shot. Make sure that you don't do an all-out attack, because all-out attacks aren't actually good against her. That's the reason why we keep, um, Ton passing, because that's, this is the only way we're ever going to do damage to her. Okay, another big Meggy Dolan, but this time with the debilitates and the extra damage we have. Okay, so far so good. It's so far we're safe. So, so far we're not dead, which is the best thing here. Okay, Agnestra, it shouldn't hit hard. Yeah, Charge didn't do anything that good. Okay, so far so good though. Okay, um, I probably should go for a Soma here. That'd probably be the best thing. So Joker, I'm actually gonna have you Soma up. And then after that, we'll figure out what to do. But this is just to make sure everybody's um, SP and HP is full, just so we're ready. Because we did get those from the Wardens, and this is the only thing I can think of using those for. Other than the um, the DLC um, super fights with um, Mako um, with um, Minato or Makoto from Persona 3 and Yunar Kami from um, Persona 4, so yeah, definitely would be cool um, to eventually do those fights. I think those are going to be the last things we do in the series, though. I think we'll beat the game first before we do those because those are not story based; those are more challenges than anything. So definitely. In due time, we'll do those, but just letting you guys know, just in case. Okay, hopefully, okay, thankfully, never messed up with that. Because it was definitely could have been worse if, um, they didn't go down the way I wanted them to. And she's still debilitated, which is good. So, we'll go for this instead. So, let's see here. Where's my, um, psychic bomb? That's what we need right now. Okay, drop her down again. Make sure she can't do anything, um, too scary, because she's really scary. And I'll be honest there. Okay, go back and spooks. Okay, so far so good. Um, I think we can go for another Meggy Dolan here, I think. And then we don't want I don't want to get her into phase um three just yet. What I want to do is actually get a brave step ready just in case. Because I think if we can get that safely up, I think we'll be safe to um be ready for the next phase. 
Okay, Makogon. Thankfully, um, so far she's been very nice to us. Because, <laughs> oh, here we go. This is where things get interesting. Please don't one-shot me. Okay, somebody got hit. Two people got hit. Uh-oh. Uh oh, that's not good. But thankfully, we have final, um, final thingy. So we still, we're still good. But that does hit hard, and that's not good to get hit by. Okay, let's go for concentrate now. Make sure that's all sets. Okay, so far so good. Okay, this is where things get really interesting. So I don't have a full heal for everybody on these characters. I do have it on Morgana, but. Actually, if salvation. Oh, it's not the same kind of salvation. For some I thought it was. That would have been definitely nice. But, um, let's make sure that we actually knock her down first before we go for anything else. Because we can. We need to make sure that she doesn't get a freebie here. So let's see here. Make sure that we're using the right ones, though. I see rage here. Rage sounds fine. Okay, let's drop rage on her. That'll force her to attack us normally. But as long as we have it, that's honestly the best thing. Okay, now that we have that set, now I want to make sure that, let's see here, we could go for, oh, yeah, we can go for that, okay, so what I'm going to do here, oh, but I can't, okay, so we shouldn't go that way, but I could, in a way, still do that, but I want to make sure everybody's healed, so we're going to go safe here, just in case, because we don't want to mess up here. This is definitely a threshold that is not easy to, um, well, to get back to, obviously, for us. So, I would like to do this in one take and not have to redo the fight multiple times, so I'm trying to be as careful as possible. So if I'm playing a little bit, um, you know, scared, I have good reason to, because this fight takes a while to go through, and as long as you're playing safe, you can do this perfectly without messing up, so I'm just trying to play as safe as possible. Okay, now we can go back into Satan all again, go for Maggie Dolan, make sure to do a good chunk of damage, and hopefully, there we go, 2,000 damage, that's good. Okay, there we go, perfect. Oh, what a display of skill. Oh, the countless hardships you've suffered have clearly been benefit to you. It's often said that luck determines a great deal of one's success. Allow me to witness your own luck next. Okay, here we go. The phase 3, 50% HP, and this is where things get interesting. Since now we actually need to crit every single turn if we want to survive here. So, yeah, this is gonna hurt. And, uh oh, well, that's interesting. Okay, um, I forgot that we blocked that, but still. Okay then, um, we need to make sure that we're always doing crit damage here now, though, since this is where things get very, very interesting. Um,. I don't think it matters that they're burned, I think. I think we can um, be more safe there, I think. But this is where things get interesting, because this is definitely going to be entirely based off of luck. Because we need to make sure we crit. Okay, there's the crits. Okay, we have the crit for this turn, so we're safe this turn. Perfect, okay. That makes things a lot easier. Okay, thank you, game. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're safe this turn. So that definitely works. Okay, let's go into, um, I think Neo Cadenza would be nicer. So let's make sure everybody has, um, the extra HP and attack and everything else to make sure. I forgot what Burn does, I don't know if it blocks some of our damage, but just in case I'm being careful. Okay, let's go for maybe a double checkmate to make sure that her stats are going to stay down for three more turns. And then another Brave Step, just to make sure that we have this for three more turns. Because this is where um, our crits are coming from. It's from the swords dances and the <laughs> and the brave step. So as much crit as we possibly can get is what's saving us. Hopefully she can knock us out of our burn. That would be nice. But I'm hoping for Harrison recovery. But Harrison recovery is not something that's just going to help us out of always. So let's see here. Hopefully we can get out of that for free. Oh, free accuracy down. Okay, <laughs> I'll take it. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go into um, good old um, Yotsune again. Let's make sure we're doing Paso Tobies. Because it's a lot of damage and it's um, if we can get a crit from it, it's definitely going to help. Okay, let's keep going for sword stances. We need to get that crit. Because if the crit doesn't happen, we're, we're pretty much done for. Because this game is completely rigged against us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Please, game, don't do it to me, please. 
Don't please. You don't know how how scary it is to get to the last person there. Because I'm not joking. It's a one shot. You're over. You can't you can't cancel it. So if you don't do it, it's over. Okay. Okay. I'll take it. And because she was uh because she was on fire it didn't count for the extra damage. So I have to keep going. Okay. Let's see here. I'm gonna make sure I feel like it's gonna go away by next turn. So let's see here. Well how are we on um baton on that? Let's make sure we have another brief step. I think that's safer. So let's double make sure that brave step's gonna stay up. Because the longer we have brave step up, the safer we are. Okay. Cosmic flare. So all we need to do is just get through the final part here in or the final phase here. And then we'll be for um home home free, where it's a lot safer than, you know, hoping and praying that we don't die. Okay. Well, Veil of Midnight definitely saved us there for free damage, but hopefully we can get another crit here without messing up here. Because crits are definitely everything we need here if we want to actually survive. So please, game. Okay. First crit didn't go out. Second crits. Please. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're safe. Okay. <laughs> Save this turn now. Okay, good. Good to know, good to know, good to know. Okay, Yotsune, I need you to hit for a lot of damage here, boys. <laughs> just as much as you could possibly do, just get us out of this phase. Okay. So far, so good. Um, let's see here. I want to make sure that we're fully ready here. Um, I'm gonna probably go... Let's see here. Should we go for HP, or should we go for... I might, I might, um, go for this, actually. Strength up spooks. Here you go. Free crit for you. Or charge. And hopefully... Okay, no, we don't need it. Oh, no wonder you ch you're, you're the chosen trickster. To think you'd push me to such a point. You've made it clear. I must be willing to tap into the absolute depths of my might. I hope you've prepared yourself for this moment forward. I am holding nothing back. Okay, here we go. Thankfully, we're out of the gimmick. The gimmick is over. Now we just have to survive. So, thankfully, that didn't do much damage, so we're safe for now. But, it's, um, the gimmick's out now over, though, thankfully. Because that gimmick, um, it's terrifying. I'm gonna be completely honest, because getting a crit no matter what is definitely not gonna be the easiest, easiest thing. But, because of the fact that we don't actually want to be using physical skills anymore. We actually want to go full magic now, because that's her final weakness. Thankfully, she actually is a weakness, but I'm going for um, the um, the high energy there for a reason. And the reason why I made sure Joker concentrated first is because of the triple. You don't get the triple, I think, with um, normal, so I'm just making sure we get it safely. Okay, so far so good. She's going to be attacking every turn, it seems, so that's definitely interesting. But we're not going to worry about that yet, because we want to make sure that everyone's fully healed and everyone's fully ready for the final phase here. Because the final phase, although it doesn't seem like it's going to be hard, she does attack with that chainsaw every turn. But I think, yeah, this like stuff like this is definitely where the actual things we need to worry about is like getting hit by the big attacks here, because those are severe. So it's not like we're getting hit by like you know just easy damage. This is like big damage hits. Okay, well, static nullification isn't that bad. Okay, we can work with that. Okay. Now that we're ready here, though, we're pretty much ready to go in for the biggest hit here. But I'm just making sure that we're fully ready here. And just to make sure, let me look at Concentrate, because it's the best way of checking my stats. Okay, so yeah, we need to do Orpheus here. So let's go for a new Cadenza, make sure everybody's fully heat rised up, because we're definitely going to need that. And then... I guess we start going for the bigger hits here, because now that we're pretty much in the um, part where we're at, I think we're pretty much ready though. Okay, let's just go for as much attacks as we possibly can do. Okay, 1000 damage with that, not bad at all. Um, atomic um, Flare will definitely be nice with the severe damage from that, another 1000 damage. Okay, so far so good. Um, Kogawan should be also some good damage here as well, as long as it hits, yep, 433 is not bad at all. Okay, yeah, this is pretty much over then. As long as we don't get hit hard here, it's, um, we'll be safe, I think. Okay, she's going for another Decundum. So, thankfully, we're wasting one of her turns by debilitating her, which is nice. Okay. 
Let's go back into good old um, Satanel for another big old Megidol one, since it doesn't look like we're going to need those crits anymore to actually do big hits now. So now we're perfectly ready. The reason why we need to do those um, baton passes, though, um, earlier... Oh, because she's using that persona, it blocked it. Eh, that's unfortunate. Oh, showtime. <laughs> you look like you're ready to rule. Yep, she is. I'll be right back because I like watching these. To get a little crazy. Stay focused. <laughs> you ready for this? Time to die. There you go, 640 damage for you, Lavenza. I hope you like it. <laughs> Thank you, Ryuji, for making a nice appearance in this fight. Okay, so let's see here. Um, let's just keep going. Let's see how much damage my gun does. Might as well. Okay, she blocks it. It was worth, ch worth checking, honestly. Okay, Ice Age is something on um, needs to worry about, but if we can get Veil of Midnight or Evaded Ice, definitely works better. But now Kazumi's frozen, though. That could definitely come um, to a cost, but Veil of Midnight's been saving us a lot, so it might not be the worst case scenario. Let's just keep hitting with Megidolons, just keep doing damage. As long as we're safe, we'll be fine. And let's make sure she's not nullifying that still. Okay, she's not. Okay, we can go for a big hit then. Okay, let's go for a Blazing Hell. Make sure we get as much damage as we possibly can before she gets another hit in here. And then, let's go for another checkmate to force her to waste another turn. Because those Dakandas um, that she's doing on herself are definitely helping. Okay, she's going back for more Chainsaws. Uh-oh. Okay, Psycho Blast. That's not a thing we need to worry about because it doesn't actually affect ice and she just broke us out for free. Okay, thanks. <laughs> you could've hit us with your chainsaw and just got a freebie, but the game wanted me to get a freebie for safety. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, um, let me double check on that. Yeah, we need another Neo Cadenza. Okay, here you go, team. Just make sure you're fully tapped out, just so we don't have to worry about any kind of random things to happen. Because I don't know if there's a turn limit to this as well, so, um, I want to be careful, because I know there is a term limit on the harder difficulties, but I don't know if they would put one here, so I'm just being careful. Okay. Another persona that's different than what we know, so we'll just go for the burn then, and make sure we can do any kind of damage. No nope, blocks. Okay. So she only uses two, okay. So, um, the green, um, out of Varkara, or whatever his name is, the, um, mostly physical persona is the one that we want to be hitting with fire then. Okay, got it. Just, just to know for sure what we're doing here, because it is something we do need to look out for if we want to make sure we're doing damage here. Okay, well at least we now know, because it's better than not knowing at all. So, thankfully we're doing some good damage here though. Oh, don't witness my true power! Uh oh, concentrate. What are you about to do? Concentrate? Okay. Maggie don't want, uh oh. How much damage does that do? Oh no! Oh, final guard. We just got saved. Apparently someone was about to get one-shotted. Thank you, Futaba. Thank you so, 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 so much. Okay, so there is a, a phase five. Okay, I did- I- Okay, well, I think that's the um, end game. I think. Because whatever that was, um, we were full HP and we had final guard go off, so we need to end this now. Okay, and what did she do exactly? Because I wasn't paying attention. Um, what did we get for free? Um, I don't really know, but I'm just gonna be careful and we're gonna just go for big hits now because we need her out, out of here now. We can't let her um, play anymore because if we let her play, I think this is over. So let's just be careful here and make sure we don't die because if we die here, it's over. So, um, yeah. Um, uh oh, she's resisting. Uh oh. Um, let's see here. Hopefully, Atomic Flare does enough damage. Please be enough damage. Okay, 400. And then uh, go from Kogawan, just as much damage as we possibly can do. 333. Three, three. Okay, Psycho Blast. She's not going for Concentrate, though. Okay, we're safe. But someone did get hit, so Makoto's down. Okay, she's gonna get a free attack. She's going for a charge. Thankfully, she's not going for the combo, though. So we're safe for the time being. And thankfully, that final guard didn't go up earlier, because I think if that went up earlier, I think what the game would have been over. No matter what we would have done there. Ooh, Ultimate Support. Thank you, thank you, Futaba. Okay, we just won, just because of that in general. With a 99% um, 99 luck stat, it took us that long to get ultimate support. I'll take it. 
because that's a free charge and I believe a free um, stat buff on everything. And it looks like we don't need the fill save, we actually did it in an episode. I will take it. 52,800 experience. 144,000 money. Not bad. And the hardest boss fight in the entire game is now over and done with. I don't know about the final boss, but I'm pretty sure the final boss isn't harder than the new game plus boss. Let's be honest, because this is new game plus plus, basically. So, I'm pretty sure because of Yoldabaoth not being anywhere close to the Wardens, I don't think Haruki's going to be anywhere near as hard as Lavenza was. If that even is the final boss, because we still don't even know, even know if we're going to be fighting Haruki. We do know there's going to be obviously a final boss there, but we don't know if we're going to be fighting Haruki his persona, or whatever is going to be going on, or maybe there's something else that we don't know about. But definitely, this is, I'm pretty sure this is the hardest fight in the game, because I don't think Maruki would be harder. So if we could beat Lenza, we could beat Maruki, right? So I'll definitely take it. Um, Eric, that was as expected. You expected me to win? Um, I have truly witnessed firsthand the fruits of your rehabilitation. No matter what strives you to keep you down, you have retained your freedom through your own will. Um, despite all the pain and hardship in your way, you have kept faith in your comrades and continued to fight for your own beliefs. It was tough. I don't know. It was definitely tough, that's for sure. Um, you may say that, yet st you still accomplish this task. That must be what charms those around you. Maybe. Um, you do not simply outshine others. You charm them, pushing their abilities beyond the limits they thought they had. Um, that must be, um, also be a form of power to rule over. Hmm, maybe. Um, thanks to you, I feel as though I now fully comprehend my role as one who rules over power. Okay, makes sense. Um, I am a being that most must inherently believe in the potential of humanity as they are guided along. Um, as such a being, I am hesitant to admit this. Um, but I am happy. You're happy? Um, I am extremely grateful that I could witness the path you've chosen to forge. Um, thank you so much, my trickster. I should be thanking you. It's- I'll still count on you. Definitely still won't count on you. But I should be thanking you. Thanks for the hardest um, test we've ever f um, fulfilled in this game. Because this is my first time fighting Lavenza, um, was today. And um, this this fight was my first one. But today was my first time even attempting it. And um, wow. Um, huh. Because I found out about it a couple days ago because I didn't record for a couple days. So I was kind of figuring out what I want to do for um, today's episode, and then I found out that, that Lavenza had a boss fight. Um, I had to pump myself up for it, but the thing is, is I had homework to do for school, so I was working on homework for three days. Took a long time to do it, because it was a really hard assignment, but um, yeah, I was able to pump myself up for it, and today was my first attempt at actually doing it. And as we just saw, I was able to do it on our normal um, file. I didn't have to do it through a safe file or a fail safe here, which was a lot nicer than, you know, having to use the fail safe and not getting to keep the items because I'm not going to play the final part of the game on safe difficulty, obviously. So, um, because you're locked into safe difficulty if you do it. So, if I want to keep the item, you would have to play through safe difficulty. And, honestly, the item you get is actually really good. So, um, yeah, I would definitely like to be able to keep it. And since we're on our normal file, and there's no reason to not get the item and save afterwards, we're perfectly safe to get to keep it. And it's called the Omnipotent Orb. And the, um, it's actually something I know about from Persona 5 Strikers. Um, for Strikers version, um, it blocks all magical attacks except for Almighty, which is really good. Um, I believe you can only get it on Merciless difficulty, though, but um, even though I didn't get it in my Switch version of Persona 5 Strikers, because I ended up getting it on um, PS4 so I could play it on the PS5 here, since it's easier to play it, um, play Persona 5 Royal and Strikers on here anyways, because these are the native um, well systems in general, and then um, they're optimized better for these games um, on the 
well, original consoles they've released on, or, well, Strikers released on all consoles, um, on Switch, and I don't know about Xbox, but for some, um, the PlayStation and the Switch. So PC, PlayStation, and Switch. I originally bought it for the Switch, and I played through that first before playing through, um, I think, I'm trying to remember where, when I started playing through it. I think during, when we were playing Persona 3, I think, um, I finished, um, Persona 5 Strikers around this time we started playing Persona 3. I think that's when I played it. It's been a while. It's a fun game, though. I definitely do like the gameplay of that. Um, but it's definitely it's gonna be different than the combat style in this game. So everything we've seen for combat in Persona 3, 4, and 5, it's gonna be a lot different. It's gonna be more Dynasty Warrior, but it's gonna be a little bit different than Dynasty Warrior because of the fact that it doesn't feel like Dynasty Warrior because you're still doing turn-based combat but in real time. It's pretty cool. It's like Nino Kuni, in a way, is kind of the best way to explain it. But you have, like, um, areas like maps, like our palaces in this game, where you're locked and confined into each chapter of it. And, well, obviously, <laughs> it's basically Nino Kuni if you had, like, um, actual maps to explore, and it was an open world, like um, Nino Kuni was. So honestly, pretty cool. But you're fully able to do whatever you want. It's really nice. Um, we'll get into that when we actually get in Strikers, but I will say this. I really do like the combat in Strikers compared to all the other Dynasty Warrior, um, like, spin-off games that were for other companies and stuff like that. Because there's some pretty good ones, and now with the fact that Fire Emblem Three Houses is now getting, um, a Fire, um, getting its own version of, um, Dynasty Warriors for, well, obviously Fire Emblem Heroes 2, basically, but um, Three Hopes definitely looks pretty good, and apparently it's more story for Three Houses, so it looks like we have another um, game on our hands in the near future. So, um, yeah, I might end up doing two Dynasty Warriors back-to-back, -back, basically, is what I'm trying to say, because three, um, three Hopes looks very, very promising. Gotta say that for sure. But, with that being said, let's finish this off. Um, yes. You're welcome. Well, this is a token of my gratitude for you. Would you please accept it? Okay, I'll take it. And I'm guessing uh, because of the fact that it's always a bookmark. <laughs> yep, another bookmark. Intricate bookmark. Take it. Um, when you previously defeated me, when, while I was separated into halves, I had given you a bookmark. That bookmark was originally entrusted to them as my memory is given form. Um, would you bestow upon you now? Is a genuine article which other, um, merely imitated. Your passion, possession of other book, of both bookmarks proves your strength is exceptional. You may currently be confronting an incredible ordeal with your comrades. However, no matter what obstacle stands in your way, you have no need to fear. After all, I have deemed you the world's greatest man. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and it seems like you do need to do the Warden's fight in order to unlock this one, because it doesn't say anything about that. So, well, that answers that question. Well, I must also give you your reward. This is for you. Okay, and there it is, the Omnipotent Orb. And if it is the same, that's going to be very overpowered. But it's for good reason. You literally just beat something that's um, the hardest thing in the game, so... Yeah. I, I guess it's fair you get an OP item for beating a very, very hard boss. Oh, regrettably, I must now return to my duties. I will see you later. Well, technically it's hard, but it's also, I guess, RNG. It really depends if you can get your crits, I think. The technical part was really easy. Once you know that you can just throw items at her, and then use the, um, well, yeah, just use items and just make sure you're doing big damage. Um... But other than that, when it comes to the actual part where it's actually dangerous, is definitely um, when you need to do the crits. The crits in whatever that concentrate Meggy Dolan thing was, because I didn't even know there was a phase 5, because I did it in phase 4 in the failsafe. So, um, yeah, um, that was terrifying, because Final Guard went up, and apparently Final Guard went, uh, went up at any other point in the game, and we didn't um, have enough HP to make sure Final Guard didn't go down. Um, apparently we probably would've got one-shotted, because we were full HP for everybody, so... 
Yeah, um, I don't even want to know how much damage that would have done. Because, yeah, that probably would have hit really, really hard. We might have survived because of the fact that Joker has Enduring Soul. But I don't know if it's a one-shot ability no matter what. But um, I'm going to hope that, probably, um, that our, we would have survived with Joker at least. But that being said, thank y'all for watching today's episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And in the next episode, I'm pretty sure we will be going and getting ready to send out that calling card. Because I don't think there's anything else after this. So I think we're fully ready to go in to the end game. So with that being said, I'll see you all in the next episode. And honestly, whatever happens, happens. So thank y'all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Keep being spooky. And peace out. Hey boys and girls, thank you all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.